last week I was talking to the children at the children's mass and I was going through who these three men are, these wise men. And as you can see, there's three different shades of skin here and three different age groups. This one's younger, this one in the back there is middle age, and that one up there is, is called the old one. You know, Casper, Melkar, and Baltasar. And then I came and stumbled upon the ages that they were. They were 20 for the young one, the middle aged one was 40, and you know how old the old one was? 60. I'm like, yikes. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem so old when you're there, when you're that age, does it? My friends are close. But in any event, you know, it's a great, they can teach us a lot, this whole Magi story. And there's many, many things that can be taught about that. I like to just reflect on one area of it. I'm sure these three men, it would take a long time in their traveling, it took at least weeks, probably months, and it's not easy traveling back then. I'm sure people said to them, you know, why are you doing this? You're probably wasting your time. Is it worth it? Is it really gonna be worth it? Like, what are you searching for? Like, what do you get out of this? So those are all questions that are gonna be popping into these men's head all the time. What are they gonna get out of it? Why are they doing it? They're absolutely crazy. But it's those same questions that hit us today, isn't it? Those same questions with our whole faith, it's the same thing. The Air Force were testing out what they call the Global Hawk aircraft. And it's a really a specialized drone. You know, the drones are smaller, but so this is kind of complicated. I, I don't know how large it was, but but apparently much larger than a drone. And and it was flying over the desert, and it's and it's and it dove right in the desert and destroyed itself. And they couldn't figure out why it did that until they examined it. And I guess there's a box that they can look at with that thing as well. And then they realized it listened to the wrong voice. A hundred miles from where that drone was flying was another smaller, like insignificant thing where they told to terminate that flight. And so this drone intercepted that and crashed to the ground. And I thought, you know, it makes a difference whose voices we listen to, doesn't it? That plane cost $45 million. And listened to the wrong voice and destroyed itself. So we have to be careful listening to voices like, why are we here? What do we get out of it? You're wasting your time. It's a, it's a lot of effort for what? See, because those same questions that they ask the wise men are asked of all of us, why we're doing this? Why we're doing this? There's two things that we need to put in our minds, my friends, when we're dealing with this. And that is our commitment, and we need to chart the course. The course must be charted. And how in life is our course charted? What's our compass? In England, there is a beautiful little church that was on one of the coastal lands that was ruined by a hurricane, completely destroyed. And as they were looking at the designs, the British army came to them, the Navy really, the Brit, called to them and said to them they'd like to pay for at least half and possibly more. And the people in the church were like, why are you doing this? Like, what's the, your, why is the church, or the government helping pay for the reconstruction of a church? And they said this, the spiral is on the charts and map. That church and its high spires is a landmark by which the ships steer their course. The church, my friends, and her teachings and her precepts help steer our lives. They're there for a reason. Don't do this, don't do this, do this. All those are for our benefit. We look at them as like birds are negative, but they're there to steer our course. Because if you do this, this is gonna happen. If you don't do this, this will happen. You see? 
It's a landmark. It's a, it's a compass for our lives. It's beautiful. So if we steer the course, those voices don't impact us as much, do they? And the other thing is when we have a commitment, we need, we need to have in our minds, my friends, we're doing this because it's a good thing to do and there's tremendous blessings attached. Renoir, I'm not having trouble pronouncing it. Every mass I have, my friends, I can't. R-E-N-O-I-R. And after every mass, people say it's pronounced, and they tell me how to pronounce it. I said, I know how to pronounce it, I just can't do it. It's got that wah. But you know, he's one of the renowned artists throughout the world, this Renoir. And you know, I think I'm just going to say R, my friends, because it's, it comes out different every time. But you know, you don't know that probably that his whole life he suffered from rheumatoid arthritis. And as he got older, it just got increasingly worse and worse. And by the end of his life, he's barely able to paint because the pain and the arthritis was so bad. And a friend said to him, you know, why are you doing this? You've painted enough. You're one of the most famous artists in all of the world. You've made more money than you ever need. Why are you doing this? And he responded, the pain passes, but the beauty remains. Those paintings that he painted in those part of his life were worth the most. Were worth the most. These three men traveled long distances and they gave very expensive gifts, as we all know. What did they get out of it? What did they get out of that? And my answer is, I don't know what they got out of it, but I can tell you they got something out of it. You know why? Because they went, they departed for their country by another route. Apparently, they were satisfied with what they got, or they went on back to Herod. You see, my friends, when we make that commitment to our faith, we receive what we need deep inside us. Deep within our very being and our souls, my friends, we're all missing something. And this is the only place where we can get that deep thing that we're missing. That's why our faith is important. And that's why we need to have our compass. And that's why we need to be committed. To be committed. The pain passes, but the beauty remains. So this week, my friends, those three wise men teach us much. May they also teach us how to live. God bless you.